rather expected, uh, Grace, that you might be a little more overstated than you are. I mean, I thought that you pro your costume would probably be more lavish than that which you appear to be wearing. I'm overestimated. <laughs> by the world at large or by your public? By everybody, I think, yes. How do you think mm. you've received this overestimation? Why is your mm. reputation inflated? That's just a lyric from a song. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I thought there was some sort of <laughs> judgment you were making. No. But you have, I... have you calmed yourself down in, in clothes over the years? Mm, try me. <laughs> I don't know quite how... Are you, are you, are, are you hearing mm. what I say to you? Mm-hmm. You have, in fact... Let, let's start... Let's pretend we haven't started this. <laughs> In the past, and we have some photographs to prove it. You do? Oh, yes, we Black do. male? Well, I don't know. Oh, Black female, there's one of them, you see. Oh, That's rather kind of more lavish really than, than what you're black. wearing now. Yes, you think so? Yeah. And mm. we have another one to follow that, which is... Well, that's you, of course, with your... It's still black, isn't it? With your ha No, it isn't. <laughs> there you are with fans and a lot of stuff on the top of your head. What is that on the top of your head? That's Chloe. Karl Lagerfeld sitting on my. Did you have a late? Did you have a late night last? I couldn't last? say that. Did you have a late night last night? They have bleepers, don't they? No, no. Where were you last no, night? No, I haven't slept in three days. I, that explains it. That explains. That explains it. it. Do you yes. understand what oh. I'm saying to you? No, your accent is a bit foreign. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Now, how shall I go around the back of this? I wonder. Have you have you been photographed recently? Just now, no? Right now? On television? No, have you been photographed as a model recently? Oh, no, no. Is that what it is? Yes. No, no, not recently. I think I'm homesick, maybe, right then? I think there's some... I don't know what's wrong with you. I think there's something... <laughs> no! <laughs> how... How would you like to be photographed tonight by a man called Patrick Litchfield? Hmm. Oh, I think we've, we've, we've just made a date. Back there? Uh -huh. Has he promised to photograph you? Uh -huh. Well, in order that we may find out whether this is a promise or a threat from Patrick Litchfield, let's introduce Patrick Litchfield. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Litchfield. Good evening to you. Hello, Russell. She says that she just met you. Don't behind. turn your back to me. Well, oh. he's got it. He's got it. She okay, says. Yes. She says. She, <laughs> she's just met you behind there, and that you've promised to photograph her. Now you are. I'll move my chair a little bit back so that I'm looking at both of you. Uh, You're actually engaged in, in photographing the hundred most famous, uh, most beautiful women in the world at this precise it. moment. That's it. How far? How many of the hundred have you photographed? Well, since she's just said what she said, I'm up to ninety-nine. You mean she... No. I get Well, she 100. gets the last, doesn't she? Because, um, well, I, I, I would like to photograph her. I'd love to. Had you heard of her before? In fact, of course. Tonight. But we've, in fact, just made a date for Thursday next week in New York. Oh, so you're jetting over there to do it? I'm, and nobody else will work on Thanksgiving Day, so she's agreed to go. So he's coming to see you? Mm, right. Now get some rest before he comes over to see you. As long you? as I don't eat the turkey. Right, no. fine. Or the stuffing, yeah. even. Um, no, you're going, you're, you're, you're make, going to make a lot of enemies if, you, if, you're, if you're going to photograph the hundred most beautiful women in the world. Yes, I suppose you are. If you, if you promise that you'll photograph people and not use them, but um, nevertheless, you can't just say that here are a hundred and I'll photograph only those hundred because one might look, not look good that day or I might do, take a, a predictably bad photograph. But who decides who are the most hundred, who are the hundred most I'm afraid to say I do because it's just, it's my opinion and I think that's fair. I mean, don't you? Yeah. And you can't say let's have a committee and, it, and you and she and I all decide who the hundred most beautiful in the world is. I mean, I could just, um, I could, I, could, I could take a general list, but I don't think it would be worthwhile. Either. Right. You've left out people like the people we would na naturally think of, included like Elizabeth Taylor and like Brigitte Bardot. She's yes. Um, my vision of Bardot is actually before I photographed her, before, in fact, now. And I haven't photographed her except briefly at a party in Paris, and I just don't think that to do her again would, however marvellous she is for her age, would really make her worth the book at the moment and it wouldn't and people would say god what did he do he made her awful and right. I, I think, think i took her place yeah perhaps you did You're the wrong guy. let me take your snap 
Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it now. Look out! He's going to do it now. Do you want to do it now? No, I, I won't do it now actually, because I'd rather have a more I relaxed. Uh, more I am. I don't think she. I, if you relax her anymore, she'll slip off the chair and fall away. I don't know. Where I can't have I don't know where your like head, is. darling. I do not know where your head is at this moment. I, re I know it's on the top of your shoulders, but I mean, conversation. It's like, have you ever tried to climb the north face of the Eiger in high heel shoes? <laughs> Edward Wimper. Because oh, trying, trying to squeeze blood out of a stone at the moment, but no doubt she'll relax as <laughs> you get along. Um, and have fall you out of the chair? Yeah, that's right. Fall back on it now. Help. Uh, help. Are there any of the 99 women you've actually photographed? Are any of those Miss Worlds? Yes, I, I photographed a number of beauty queens. I thought there was actually, oddly enough, the, um, I, I compared with Sasha de Stoll the, the 76 Miss World thing. And in fact, um, the girl who came second in that was Miss Australia, and she didn't know how to cook something or other, so she didn't win it uh, because of those questions. You know, did the you ask came the fifth. The girl who came fifth is Miss Wor is Miss is uh, Wonder Woman. Right, Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Yeah, she was very tall. Yeah. I asked. I asked some questions. Yes, yeah. everything went wrong. That yeah. Was, yeah. What what went wrong? Well, there was this ghastly moment during the. There's a link. You know about television. Uh, there's a sort of link, when um, <clears throat> those who are talking on the stage have to retire and the ladies get into their national costumes, whatever it was. And Sasha and I had five minutes hidden in television because of the butting it up altogether. Right. Uh, we just sped down to our room <clears throat> and he asked me some rather uh, searching questions about what I thought about the ladies, you know, who were the contestants. And I agreed, uh, I mean, I agreed with a lot of his comments and also asked him um, <clears throat> some very intimate questions about what he thought about the contestants. And when we got to a certain point, the most terrific noise started, and indeed we could hear running footsteps from miles away, clunk, 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 all the way down the corridor. And so we both froze, and the door opened very quickly, and a man rushed in and grabbed the little thing that you've got round there, because indeed nobody had switched it off. And our comments about the contestants was going <laughs> <coughs> right round the Albert Hall. And so right round the world. Around, well, not round the world. I think they could find it at the Albert Hall, but my mother at that stage was in the Albert Hall. So when I got back up on stage again, it wasn't uh, your, great applause from her. Right. Your face was slightly... Yes. Yes, yes, it was a little. Yes. Now, look here. We know that you're very well connected. I mean, you are a, you were a cousin of the... No, not this moment. <laughs> you're a cousin of the Queen and you're a, a, a titled gentleman in your own right, does that open easily doors for you? And does it, in fact, open doors that you'd rather often... <laughs> I wasn't looking at her, Russell. I was think, listening to you. I was listening didn't to you. didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Are you now more interested? I'm impressed. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. You see, oh. it gets out, doesn't Absolutely it? It gets out. It. Does it open doors you wished would... Uh, you didn't want to be open, in fact? In fact, it doesn't open any doors, because what most people really want is a decent picture. Um, you haven't asked me here because of all those things, have you? No, I've asked no. you here because you take pictures and because you're doing these hundred... Hundred most beautiful uh, hundred ladies. Beautiful women, because I thought you could make some comment... And because I hope you would help me out with Grace Jones, which you're going to have to. <laughs> I'm doing my best, <laughs> lady. Best. Keep, keep going, let's you're doing keep, very I well. Keep I shall do a monologue for you for right. about five minutes. Right. I think but they no, expect I, more I, I seriously think that, that uh, it doesn't really matter who you are. I, I hope that I've got to where I am by taking decent pictures of women. And I like photographing ladies very much, and I think that, um, that you know, this is just a chance to complete a list, which I've done for a long time. You see, we, we all think of you, I, th I think, well, sorry, I think of you mm. as uh, leading a tremendously glamorous life, that you sit in some kind of office in London, the telephone rings, you pick it up and there's somebody saying, I want you, Litchfield, to jet off to uh, Addis Ababa and do the whatever it is of Tunis. But it's or always whatever. to photograph a camel. It ne it, you never actually. Get <laughs> There's no point in, in ever imagining that photographers live that kind of life because I remember as a, when I was a young assistant, always thinking the telephone would ring and there would be that kind of thing, and it didn't happen. And it doesn't happen unless you go out and actually really try and make it work. Um, and I simply like photographing ladies very much, and I think that because of that, various um, people have agreed to be photographed mm. for this book, which. Mm. I think might be great fun. But it's, so it's not glamorous. It, it, it can often be. Um, it can often backfire into your own face. Yes, it isn't glamorous because I could suddenly say, "I want to go and photograph so and so," and they don't turn out to be like you remember them looking. I mean, that's the thing that worries me. D did you ever give up in the early days? Was it was it ever such an appalling thing that that? Uh... Oh, I had a few. Yes, I did. Yes, I. Re it's, this, it's coming, don't eat him. It's now, coming to life. It's coming to life. <laughs> Because, you know, it's very difficult for me to watch out what you're going to do to him and for him to ask me questions. 
<clears throat> yes, I had. Well, I had problems. I, mean, I had problems in my early days. I mean, when I, because in the early days nobody knew that you were any good at anything, so you used to get sent off with journalists to sort of odd places. And I remember one instance when <clears throat> I was told to go to some foreign client with a journalist I'd never worked with before, and depressed as usual, because it is actually a bit of a sweat all the time getting onto an aeroplane. I stopped by a breakfast party that I knew was happening, and I saw a man who I thought was dead because his head was absolutely buried in a plate of bacon and eggs. And, you know, I took compassion on him and I lifted his hair and I thought, before I go to the airport, I can at least save his life. If, if no more. You well, right. So I said, mm. is there any problem? And he said, oh, this is a terrible problem. And I said, what is it? And he said, I've got to go away for two months. And I said, oh, what's wrong with that? And he said, I've got to go with some called Litchfield. <laughs> this wasn't so good, you know. So anyway, but oh, we got on very well, and that's that's the way life went. But, but after 15 years of photographing ladies, there are going to be a hundred, right. which I suppose one should be able right. to produce after 15. Years. We have we've been out and about with our camera, following you uh, recently, because you you have um you have just done an assignation with a lady called um, Susan Hampshire, and there you are. There she's coming to your house. Oh, she's coming to your house. Isn't she? Yeah, she's coming to my studio here. Yeah, why yes. why has she got to come there rather than well, you go to her? Only because I think it's probably better to control the makeup and the hair and the. Uh, and you don't go to the front door to meet her, do you? Well, I didn't actually because I was setting the lights. Uh, but, you know, I just, my, the most important thing comes in now when I tell the makeup guy, Clayton Hard, who I know right. very well and always, always uh, does what I want to. Um, he, do. And he's seen her before. Yes, he? and he's seen what I need. Right. And he's, he's going to work on her now so that she That's moves right. from one room yeah. to another to have her first graft. She's right. a nose like mine. Hello. Hello. You're done. Hello. Yes, I'm ready. That's smashing. Let's just see the whole thing. What, what date is that dress? Uh, about 1880, I think. I think we'll try and do this one, because it is tremendously symmetrical. Yes. And everything, your hair is symmetrical, and the only thing that's off, which breaks it up, is that, which is lovely. So we'll do a very straightforward front lip, just pretty short, I think. Right. Right, we're ready? Yes. Oh, the dress is not done up. It doesn't matter, does it? No, no, we're not shooting back. Good. Well, I mean, you can if you wish. <laughs> After all that, it would be better to shoot the front. And uh, only if these dresses are very tight, they stay done well. up and it just sort of keeps flopping open. Yes. Well, just because I want to have a bit of bosom. Yes, I haven't got much, but I, what I've got, I want it to stick out. <laughs> How's that feel? That's lovely. Thank you very okay. much. You can do another one up here, actually. That's it. That's absolutely right. Just here, that's that. I've across. I mean, I'm just getting an inkling of it under her right arm. I'll tell you what, there, that's it. That's perfect. Okay, just straighten the camera. That's lovely. And just peer at me for a moment. Good. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, Let it cook. Uh, and the arms, it's going to be better. Let me have another pillow, can I? Thank you. But you're getting a thick top arm. No, it's just that I'm not, I'm not sure what the arms are, are right because they, they, because it's red, black, black. It, 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 it makes them they'll look prominent. I think it's probably a contour picture than I thought. Is there any hint in that last photo I've got of the edge of um, the bank? Yes, there is. Yeah. 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 I don't do anything at all. But I don't think that's going to work for me. <laughs> well, it does, it does, it does, it does. Very nice, this. I mean, the, dress, the whole thing actually. Is it symmetrical on the shoulders? Yes, it is. And there, in fact, is the completed uh, photograph. Has she seen this? Since no, not yet. I haven't before now. It's, do you like it? Do you approve of it? Well, it's all right. It's a funny colour, but um, it will be all right on the day. Has I mean, anybody actually looked at a picture that you've taken, Patrick, and said, it's, that's not me, or I don't like that. Yes, quite a lot of people, but uh, surprisingly, uh, not surprisingly perhaps, but Lady Docker, I remember, once had a lot of letters uh, which she sent on to me saying that um, her friends had thought she you know, was you know, dying and mm -hmm. it was awful. But the, the best trick I've discovered with people like that is, is to photograph them and turn the photograph back to front and send them the pictures, because they're so used to looking at themselves in the right, mirror right. that they, they say, at last, good. he's got me. 
which is interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll all try and put the mirror behind us. Yes, now, that's the answer. That, yes, that'll change our opinions. Now then, let me leave, stop you there for a moment, because also with us tonight, we have another photographer. Uh, this one has a more particular regard for the curves of the countryside than actually female anatomy. He's a very fine landscape photographer. But this photographer also has vigorous opinions about elegance and style. He says, to be elegant, you have to wear gloves and perfume and makeup. And this person wears all three. He's 89 years old on Saturday. He's in our audience tonight. Welcome, Mr. Walter Poucher. I never have my fingers manicured. You know, right, she never has her fingers manicured, she's just told me. Oh, you're 8 to 9 on Saturday, so we're going to wish you many happy returns. Thank you very much. And you're wearing makeup tonight. Yes, very special for you. Uh, you're... <laughs> Is it? Well, it was created by Cosmetics à la carte, especially for tonight. For tonight's gala performance. Yeah, now, let me put a few people further in the picture. You are happily married. Yes. And you live in Rygate in Surrey. Yes. And you play golf a lot. I do, yeah. And you make, wear makeup when you go out onto the golf course. No, no, no. I, I was go hoping you would say yes, because oh. I, my, I was going to ask what the other guys said when you were at the 13th or 14th tee. When oh. do you wear makeup then? Oh, well, normally I, I don't wear eyeshadow and lipstick, except on a special painting night tonight. I wear very, very little trace of foundation, that is all. And those are, your, those are the, the well, gloves you're wearing? These are special for tonight again. Again. Those are, those, those are gala gloves, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. Well, the girls asked me to put them on special tonight. Right. Now, how many years have you been working in and around the cosmetic business? Oh, well, I was 40 years in that. 40 years, yes. And how did you start in that? Well, I started because um, after the war, there was, I wanted to do something different. We were talking about the First World War, are we? The First World War. Right. See, I was in the Royal Army Medical Corps in the war, and uh, I had already got a, uh, degrees in science. My father wanted me to become a doctor. I was at Charing Cross Hospital in King's College, and in the early days, uh, a lecture was given in Bartholomew's when they invited the students to go to see how things were done during the war. And I attended that lecture, and the very first question the men asked was, is there a chemist here? And like a fool, I put my hand up. And what happened? Well, he said, can you be in France in three days? We need a chemist out there very early. Now, it wasn't very pleasant in France at that time, Oh, it was, was terrible. It? I was three months before I actually found the job I had to do. What were you doing in France then? Oh, well, I was looking after drugs and things like that, the, uh, the distribution of them. Were you burying people at all? Uh, no, but I saw a lot of dead people, of course. I was in the Battle of the Somme, amongst other things, Passion Day later on, several times. And what disgusted me was, of course, the continuous burying of arms and legs, which had to be burnt to get rid of, you know. And, uh, Is that why you shot into a perfume factory yes, when you that, got that's, back? that's why I, I, <laughs> start, I was very interested in the synthesis of flower orders like jasmine and rose and things like that. And I studied that for three years. I got copyable uh, results, but of course nature as you know, is the ideal thing, and you never get exactly like nature. Right. But we got very near, and then I wrote a book about it. Well, you've written a lot of books about all sorts of things. Yes, I know. Why is, it, why is good perfume, the best perfume, so hellishly expensive? Well, it's expensive for this reason. Uh, well, I retired from that business 20 years ago, and the price of jasmine essence then was 2,000 francs a kilo. Today it's 50,000 francs a kilo. Well, now, you have the option of keeping your formula exactly the same and putting up the price sky high so nobody can afford to buy it, right. or you bring in an expert who can make synthetics very nearly like some of the natural right. things and you supply them. Now, a lady who is used to wearing exactly the same perfume, she notices a deterioration. Are you wearing perfume? Mm. Can you smell her at no, all? No, I've got my own body odour perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and keep it on a slightly higher level, if we may. <laughs> No. Are we? Are you wearing perfume at the same No, moment? no. I, I very seldom right. do wear. No, no, no. Stay, stay, stay. If you turn your back no, to me, I've got a minute. I have got. I, mean, really, I have got to talk to this. This has been going on too long already. Well, it's not. It's only going to go on in about another six minutes, and you're going to have another little part of it soon. That's, but well, let, well, maybe I should go let right me now. No, then. Don't, don't go right now unless you really want to. Well, don't turn no, your no, back on me anymore. I can't look at you. Ah. Now, hold, hold, hold. Stop. 
<laughs> Hold on, just a moment. Just, uh, just, just, just. Move your chair back a bit or something. I, I, Gee. What I am taught. Can you listen to what he is saying? Because he's talking about his yeah. perfume making. I love it. I wear all four different kinds of perfume. Are you wearing any perfume at this precise moment? Mm, just no. Don't get the bouquet now. Well, now wait a minute. <laughs> what, one, let me just ask I'm you one question. I'm wearing the one from come... last night. I had four different perfumes on last night, and I still have them on. Just allow me then to, to ask you one more question, then I will come back to you. Right? Hold on for one second. Another one of the second, things you have yeah, done, Mr. Poucher, to some distinction, is also you're a photographer, a mountaineer and a photographer. Yeah. And there are a lot of jolly photographs in this particular book. When you're mountaineering in Scotland, as you were there, do you, what do you wear then? Oh, I wear climbing clothes. And they're very special to keep me dry. I get caught in the rain like everybody else, you know, and I've been trapped in bogs. And then I hold the cameras up so that they don't get in the water and ruin the cameras when you carry three or four likers like I do. You know what <laughs> right. it is, yeah, expensive right. job. Do, but do, do, whenever you wear perfume like this, do people ever laugh at you? No, I, I very seldom wear perfume. I was the first man to create a cologne for men. Right. And that was years ago when people rather worried about anything for men, but it was an enormous success. And after that, shaving products and everything else for men. Right. Now then, before we break any further apart, let me just say to you that uh, I... Well, let me ask you a question. Why is it you think that men, rather than women, seem reluctant to change their style? I mean, Grace has talked about that she's not the same as she, she used to be, and you're sitting there like I am in a sort of suit and tie. I wonder why it is that, that women are, are keen to change all the time and men never. Something imposes rules and regulations about what men should wear. Look at us all, as I've said, in jackets and ties. Women can get away with what they like. It's as if there were a uniform for men. Nevertheless, there you are pioneers. Why? There are pioneers you know still. Why? Uh, well, what, you're going to tell me why? Because men always make the fashion for women, that's why. Well, here is a man who makes fashions for women. He's called Tom the Gilby. Fantasies. And he's a designer for men and for women. He's appalled by what he calls the rigidity and banality of men's fashions. Welcome, Tom Gilby. <laughs> I never thought I was going to get on. <laughs> I was back there and I was listening to all this. Now, is Patrick Litchfield a closet queen or a cousin to the queen? No, I couldn't hear. He, he is a cousin to the queen. And what oh, you, right. What, I have just... you, what have you brought on him? Ah, right, right, wait a minute. I bought just a little. How long have we got? We've got two minutes. So oh, two minutes, minutes, right? Two minutes. We have a quick change. Come right, back here. Th that's, this is for me. You do. Oh, it's for you. you yes. Like no, it's your Christmas I'm going back. I'm, oh, going, yes. be oh, yes. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going behind here to change because he says yeah, that I have no taste. Right. Yeah, she's taking seat. Seat. I'm going to change right, and back here. Now, why, well, oh, you, yes. you've made a costume for me. Oh, of course, uh, Mr. Russell. And what, yes. what did you make for me? Ah, I made a most wonderful outfit for a woman, but I'm sure you might get into it. But um, what I thought, oh, no, Russell, you don't need that, do you? <laughs> what is, I haven't no, seen what it is. No, listen, you haven't seen what, oh, don't worry. Now, listen, let's take that, put the leg in there. I'm going to put my it. leg in there. That's the first interview I've ever done behind uh, the Oh, the no, don't, don't worry. Now, listen, I don't think we're going to get these on, gentlemen. Let's get rid of that for a start. <laughs> and then, we it? don't need that either. What is it? What's he taking out? Oh, we don't need that. Russell, no, we don't need that. Oh, we dropped another one. Patrick! We dropped no. another one. We don't need that. Patrick! I don't think he's going to come Patrick. out. Patrick! It's, it's, it's all right. No, we're OK. Fine. We've almost, we've Russell, almost got... Russell, what are you putting on? Uh, Patrick, all, can you hear me? Is he Kamara Sheena, Queen of the Jungle? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we've almost, yeah. we've almost no, got it on No, what do you think here. it might be? That's White tie? No, I'm nearly ready. I don't know what it is I'm wearing. Well, we'll 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 this one, we'll we'll the traffic warning. Yes, yes, traffic warning. Yeah. What would you... Mickey Mouse. Imagine you had to go in there and change quickly and suddenly. What would you come back with? A cartoon. A cartoon. You almost are, my dear. What would you come back with? Oh, I'd come back with it. I feel a right puzzock in this, I really do. <laughs> Let me say you look it. I, well, I feel like a, I'm something from room services. I want, somebody's going to press the bell and I'm going to have to whiz up, whiz up with a thing. What do you call it? Well, I call it my new pyjama creation. It's supposed to be worn in bed. I don't know what the hell I'll you're doing. I'll wear it outside, though. Really, I would wear it out. I, really, I, would, Grace, wear, I, would, wear, it out. I would wear it out. You'd, oh, you'd yes. walk out no. in it, would you? Yes. No. Oh, yes. Mr. Poucher? 
You look well, better I, without one. I think you ought to get in the mountaineering <laughs> clothes and red stocking. Mountaineering clothes and red stocking. I rather agree about the room service thing. I don't actually think you'd be much good getting out of bed in it, but you might look quite good going into it. <laughs> <laughs> does it does it considerably alter me at all? Enormously. You look twice the weight. <laughs> <laughs> No, but one of my things is always to be on the show and do the most amazing thing. And I wanted to send you up, and I think you look awful. You've sent me so far. <laughs> no, I mean, you I mean, look at the name. You I mean, you've sent me so far off, I may never come down again. No, Thank look you at the name. Much. I put Russell Tarty on the name. Take it off. <laughs> Take it off, love. Before we dissolve any further, I must just mention my next two programmes so that you can book your seat in front of the television. On Thursday night, we are going to Dublin to meet Rod Stewart and to join his live concert from that fair city. But before that, tomorrow night in London's Wigmore Hall, Eric Fenby, the man who 50 years ago became the eyes and the hands of the blind, paralysed composer Delius, will be giving a rare performance of one of Delius's works with the cellist Julian Lloyd Webber. And then they will come here next Tuesday night to join us in the company of a most unexpected Delius fan by the name of Kate Bush, and I hope it's a slightly quieter evening next Tuesday. Until then, another song from Grace Jones, Love is the Drug. Off you go, Joe. Thanks.